Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Station Nears. In the previous episode we tested out pressurizing the base and I would say it was more or less successful. There are still a couple of things we have to implement before it works totally. Especially we have to deal with the airlock, we have to set the right pressure and we also need the ability to actually pump out the stuff in case we need to depressurize the chamber. Also we need a way to collect the CO2 that I'm actually breathing out and we need to redirect that into our future plants room. Because the plants obviously need CO2 and they're gonna produce oxygen for us in return of course. Now before we continue there are a few things that I want to take into consideration that you guys mentioned in the comments section. But before we do that I just want to complete those walls to make it look beautiful again. Alright, the first fix we can do is actually right here. Let me get rid of that very briefly. This is the logic system that actually enables all of the filtration using this switch. And I have been told that the switch acts as a logic reader basically. So let's see if we can do that. Instead of reader gas filtration, we're gonna read directly from the switch gas filtration. Switch gas filtration, perfect. And it's still gonna affect the filtration system and it's gonna turn it on. So let's test this out. Yes, indeed, it does work, which means we can easily get rid of this reader. Now, obviously, I don't have any battery. Why would I have battery when I need it? Just gonna swap that out. Here you go, drill. Good, with that logic unit out of the way, uh, let me just clean up the cables and I'm gonna be right back. Et voila, it is more or less clean again, of course, if I wanted to be thorough, I could put this over here, but, you know, eventually we're not gonna see it. And I don't intend to put more logic into that specific square, so we should be fine. Let's do a last test, and it is still working. Magnificent! The next thing I want to implement is a system in order to depressurize this room. So all we have to do is we have to have an active vent that leads into these pipes. That should be fairly easy, if you ask me. I don't think we have another active vent, so that's exactly what we're gonna produce. It's the first thing in the list, actually, so that's very easy to find. And since we're at it, I'm gonna produce a couple more pipes. We're gonna need some more anyways. Alright, I got my active vent. Now, you mentioned I could play stuff on the ceiling, but that is actually only true if you have an iron frame on the ceiling and not just a wall piece. Well, just to be thorough, I should take away this and test it like so. Yeah, that definitely doesn't work. So I think our only choice is to set this up on the floor and I've been talking about not placing anything in this square anymore, but I think this is actually the most suitable square to do this. Yeah, I mean, theoretically, we don't need too much space. For instance, we could set it up right here. This is perfect. Let me get rid of a couple of cables right here, there and there. We're gonna set up the active vent like so with the pipe facing outwards. I'm gonna hook this up like so, and I guess right here a three-way junction is gonna do the trick. Yeah, it's actually perfect. Just to be sure I hooked up everything correctly, yes, that is still working, and uh, this doesn't seem to be working well, of course, we don't have it hooked up yet. We want to set this outward, I believe, because we want to pump the stuff out. Alright, in the meantime, we have received a whole bunch of pipes here, thank you very much. And we want to start hooking that up and I think I can just lead it straight into the system. At the moment there is no stuff in the pipe, so I should be able to just take this apart and exchange it with a four-way junction. Something along these lines and that is just beautiful and very sleek. So that was actually a fairly easy fix to implement. So for instance, once the concentration of CO2 gets too high, we simply exchange all of the air and we actually recycle the oxygen and nitrogen we have left in the room. Nothing should be wasted at this point. Alright, the next thing I would like to do is actually place the tanks that are full on top of this system. We already have two oxygen tanks, so the one that is full at the moment I can just uh, transport over. So you go right here and what is going to happen is it's going to distribute whatever oxygen we had in the pipes. So we can see this number is going down until the pipes are also filled up. So the pipes can actually take quite a bit of pressure. Let's actually see what we have here. It's at the moment going up because there was still some pressure in the pipes. Actually a ton of pressure in the pipes and it's gonna distribute it into the oxygen tank. We can already see the pressure is going up. So this is pretty good. Now let's go ahead and actually smelt up some more of that nice oxide stuff. I want to fill up yet another tank and especially I want to fill up the nitrogen. At the moment it is very, very low. So I believe I should be able to just enable the system and then we're going to release the valve right here and everything should be filling up. Let's actually observe this. 
Yeah, there we go. Nitrogen is also going up. Great. So we can actually probably get rid of a couple of these stacks. I want to keep at least one stack so that I can make some more steel in case I need it. Oh, check this out. Here at the moment we have over... Ah, okay. I know why the pipe actually broke the last time. Because I smelted up too many items too quickly. That makes a lot of sense now. We need a freaking better way to collect nitrogen. This is crazy. We're just getting too much oxygen in relation to nitrogen. It's 90 versus 10%, of course, with the oxide. Yeah, looks like we're done with the oxygen at the moment. It's at uh, 13 or so megapascals and that is enough for my taste. Let's make sure we shut off the system, obviously. We don't want to be wasteful. Now, one thing I'm kind of concerned about is this. It seems as though my pipes actually don't keep my stuff. And that is kind of weird. Also, something is... Ah, there might be something in the oven that's kind of blocking everything. But I feel like this hasn't worked for a while. Ah, the arc furnace is currently locked. How did this happen? Oh, I know how this happened. Oh man, I'm actually glad I checked on that now. Somewhere around here, I have a module that I once switched and I just came across this setting that locked the arc furnace, but that's not really what I wanted to do. Yeah, there it was. I think I cycled through that and then it changed it to a locked furnace. That's what happened. And what we want is this to display a state of zero at the moment. So we could read from this reader furnace output. Let me just disable this. Read the furnace output, it's at lock, so as soon as we enable this, then it should be state 0, and therefore it should be unlocked again. And now I have to swap this back to compare furnace, I think that's where I get the information from, right? And we want to set this to activate instead, and if I set this on, we should have an unlocked furnace, hopefully, that is smelting up stuff. Though it's still freaking acting up, that is not great. Alright then, let's take apart this furnace. This wasn't my preferred solution, but what you gonna do? We're gonna place back those chutes if I manage to get the orientation. There we go. The furnace is already turned on. We should be able to activate it and just for testing purposes, we want to see this come out again. Oh, actually, it's definitely smelting up, so I guess we can already set up the corner right here. Okay, now we just have to reset the modules, of course. They have to read from the correct device. So that is a little bit unfortunate. This is furnace smelting, confirm. There we go, our output is the furnace smelting, that's working. What we want to do is we want to activate it. So we can enable this module, reader furnace output. So obviously we also have to search for the furnace, furnace smelting. And what we want to have here for the output is export slot occupant, right? Because it's the output, enable this. And last but not least, the logic input. Furnace smelting, there we go, and we want import slot occupant. Good, let's see this working. I'm just gonna grab my one single piece of iron, I'm gonna input it right there, and then another 50 pieces of iron. There we go. We should see the furnace is working and it is smelting up the 50 iron, the one actually already went through. So that did cost me a whole bunch of minutes, so I recommend you to shut off these modules whenever you're changing settings. But there we go, we can replace this and this one is fixed as well. So I guess it's kind of a fixing episode today. Improving on the systems we already got. Speaking about fixing the entire time, there was one more thing we needed to do with these modules. You actually let me know the precise number, the precise pressure we should have for a good base setup. So what I want to do is we want to increase this all the way to 100. Let me actually try to do that exactly. So the value is 100 kilopascals of pressure is what you want to have in your base. That was the most common answer in the previous video's comment section. Though if you're talking about what is safe for the character, it seems to be between 20 and 600 kilopascals. So it's not extremely specific when it just comes to surviving. Now, one more thing that has been mentioned in the comments section and I didn't quite figure it out yet. A machine in here that can heat up the gas that is in your pipe. So we could potentially heat it up before we release it into the room and also make, you know, a safe temperature for us. Maybe the pipe radiator, that sounds like something we could use for that. Yeah, let me once again get rid of these walls to see if there is an opportunity somewhere. Oh, we could actually have it right here, thinking about it. Is the slot on the top? I think so. Let's close this closet. So if I just hook it up to this pipe, we could at least heat the gas that is in the pipes after the gas mixer, provided this thing is even heating up and not cooling down the gas. 
Oh, it actually doesn't look like this is uh, connecting quite. So I did... Ah, okay, so you have to put this on top of a pipe. Now I get it. So what we have to do is we have to take this and actually put it on top of a pipe. That makes sense now. So I could set it up right there, for instance. But I don't really know how to control this thing now. <laughs> okay, I have to quickly check how to utilize this freaking radiator. Okay guys, I went back to my comment section and I figured out what we actually need is the air conditioner. With this bad boy, we can set some temperatures in order to heat up the gas. And we actually have to do this before we release the gas into the atmosphere. The air conditioner itself has three outputs. We have a waste, we have an output and we have an input. The input obviously is going to be the cool gas and the output is going to be the heated up gas. And I believe the waste is basically what doesn't have the right temperature yet. So in my mind, theoretically, the waste has to go back into the system where we have the mixed gas so that it can go through the air conditioner one more time. So before we do anything else, we should go ahead and start hooking this up. Let's see, we're gonna need a four-way junction and we also wanna hook up the data slot right there. Okay, that means we should already be able to turn it on and what we want to set it to is maybe, I don't know, maybe 20 degrees, maybe 25. There we go, cable is fixed. It is now going through the wall right here, which leaves us enough space for the air conditioner output. Here we are and I rearranged a couple of things. I now have my passive vent right here, which is connected to the output of the air conditioner. This waste output needs to go back into this pipe and this pipe obviously needs to go into the air conditioner input. So that's what we want to achieve right now. Let me actually grab a couple of my pipes. We should still have plenty of them. So maybe to begin with, we're gonna start with this section of the piping right away. This one should lead to the input of the air conditioner. However, right here, I'm gonna need a three-way junction probably. And we want to arrange it like that. So if we do something like this and this, it should be working out, right? The waste is going directly back into here. It's being conditioned once again to hopefully the correct temperature. And then it's going to be released through the passive vent. Well, I guess there's only really one way to figure out whether or not this is working. And that is to actually start the system and pressurize the base once again. So let me just reapply everything I took apart. All right, this actually looks pretty clean. I'm really fond of this corner right now. I, by the way, I moved the locker over there. It's just it was in the way. But let's set the temperature to 25 degrees. There's actually a data slot where you can input a disk. The disk I have right here. But I'm not sure what this is for. What is this going to do? Well, I guess we can leave it in there for the time being. It, it shouldn't hurt, right? Anyways, we still have to test out the system. So let's do another save game. Okay, I added the nitrogen tank. The nitrogen tank is actually already empty and I'm not sure, really sure what is happening. We don't have any pressure here. Ah, of course, I didn't start the air conditioning just yet. So we have the correct mixture right here and we have about 6.9 megapascals of it. Can we fill up this room is the question. Uh, first of all, I want to fix up this glass sheet. There we go. Okay, let's uh, start the air conditioner. Start button. There we go. And uh, what is happening? We are getting a little bit of pressure, so that is not too shabby. Uh, this is still minus 15 degrees, and right here we have a temperature of 24 degrees. Look at that, the outside temperature is 24 degrees. So that is actually already a temperature I would be comfortable at. Maybe it's even too hot, to be honest with you. Let's maybe go to, uh, not 5 degrees, let's go to 20 degrees. That seems to be a nice temperature. However, something seems to be preventing us from building up the air pressure correctly. Okay, checking this, this is minus 17 degrees, we have 20.9 uh, degrees here, okay. That is good, but the pressure is only building up slowly. Ah, well, maybe we are actually not wasting too much gas. It's just taking way longer because we need to air condition the gas first. Okay, I can actually now see the flaw of the system. We would need a lot more of these air conditioners in order to make this happen. Maybe we can actually have a couple of them on the outside and just enable the system whenever we need to actually fill up the room. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wait until we reach the 20 kilopascals mark and then we should be able to take off the helmet and we shouldn't have any alerts, hopefully. The temperature is definitely good, but the system just slowed down incredibly. Now this tank right here is empty, so I'm just gonna unscrew it. And this guy here is almost empty, but it's not gonna release anymore because we don't have nitrogen and of course it's not gonna pass the gas mixer test. Okay guys, we have almost reached the 20 kilopascals mark, but I realized that now 
we are actually going to need to control the air conditioner instead of the gas mixer, right? The gas mixer can always be enabled because as long as I don't have both of the gases available, it's not going to output anything. Instead, we need to turn on and off the air conditioner. We need to stop and start it, basically. So let's see, which one uh, was doing that? Here, the Logic Brighter. We need the screwdriver. What is it outputting to at the moment? It is outputting to the gas mixer, right? So let's turn that off and we want to swap it for the air conditioner. There we go, air conditioner. And what we want to do with it is we want to turn it on, I guess, or open. Let's try to set it to on. That should be good. I'm just going to test this. And I guess if we lower this number a little bit, we can test it better. Let's lower this to 30 kilopascals. Or maybe we're even going to go down all the way to 25. So we can see it very soon. At the moment, it is state 1. So as soon as it goes to state 0, it should hopefully turn off again. The gas sensor is at 25, actually. Look at that. It did stop, but it didn't start again. But then I still have to manually enable the start button here, which is kind of a nuisance. Not sure, maybe you guys have a solution for that. But we're gonna test the 30 mark again, so as soon as we reach 30 kilopascals, it should shut off again. I want to test that once again, and then we're gonna set it all the way to 100 again. There we go, we reached the 30 kilopascals mark. It should react very soon, hopefully. Come on, do me the favor. Ah, yes, there we go, indeed. Okay, so at least that's working out. Now, we are clearly above 20 kilopascals of pressure, so we should be able to safely remove the helmet. Let's test this out. Unlock mask and open it up. <gasps> no alerts, guys. Yes, we finally did it. I'm gonna close my mask again because one more thing we need to test today. And that is, of course, if we want to depressurize the entire base. And of course, we want to do that without wasting any gas. I believe I still have enough space in my tanks in order to do that right away. So I'm gonna enable my filtration system and we're also gonna activate the active vent. Are we ready for this? Let's test it out. Turn on and it is sucking everything out of here. That's great. We can see the pressure is going down uh, considerably fast actually. And we're also collecting the O2 we breathed out. And everything should be going back into my tanks hopefully without any explosions. Yeah, we're down to 8 kilopascals already. The temperature is actually still pretty high. Doesn't seem to affect the temperature. Yeah, it certainly does take a while to drain the entire system. And also this machine is gonna be left running. Yeah, it's not automatic enough for me. I need to find a solution in order to actually click the start button without clicking it. If that is possible at all. But for now, I guess uh, we can shut it off again. The pressure is almost at zero. Just a tiny little bit more to extract. And surprisingly enough, the temperature actually remained at a stable 20.5 degrees. Yeah, there's just a teeny tiny little bit left. I think we can just scrap that. And if I'm not mistaken, we should now have more stuff in this tank. And yes, indeed, there is more stuff in this tank. That is beautiful. Oh, I actually ran out of power. That's interesting. Okay, so that means the next time we definitely need a better backup for the power. So this thing is sucking a lot of it. But yeah, I would say with that out of the way, we are going to wrap it up. I thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.